Welcome back, everybody. The Dow ever so slightly negative right now. Microsoft, of course, uh, was a front runner in the AI boom, probably still is. But despite the head start, the tech giant is struggling to gain on its key rival in search, Google. Here to discuss is Gene Munster, Deepwater Managing Partner. Gene, let's talk a little bit about this. I mean, I, I, I joined the rush to Bing there, but I have to say that I haven't used Bing nearly as much as I've been using Google because old habits die hard, I suppose. Yes, Tyler, there are numbers around those old habits, and I think the Wall Street Journal appropriately outlines that uh, Microsoft is not closing the gap. I just want to quickly fill in the blanks here. Essentially, uh, Microsoft's their search share is just fractionally increased since the beginning of the year. We saw that in the June numbers. Their search business grew 3% year over year. That was unchanged from the growth in the March quarter. Google search, on the other hand, grew at 5% in June, up from 2% growth in March. So we've seen this quickening pace, which ultimately uh, presents what I would describe as three pressure points related to how Microsoft is going to play out here. And to frame this in, I think the first piece is, is that the use case between chat and search is still, uh, the, the differences between the use case are still uh, wide enough that people are still going to Google uh, for search. Second is that uh, ultimately, uh, Google has a massive distribution advantage, 20 to one by my estimates. And that's when you talk about the behavior, that's the behavior piece that's really hard to break. It's essentially entrenched. It's through Chrome, which is the most popular browser, and separately through Android, which uh, has 80% share of essentially the smartphone global market. And then the third piece related to Microsoft closing the gap is Google's not done here. Later this year, they're going to come out with Gemini, which is a new model that will compete with GPT. And I suspect that that's going to create more attention from users. And so I think when you put all this together, at Deepwater, our view is that Google is going to be one of the clear winners in AI, and I think that that's becoming more clear in the near term related to search. So you use an interesting phrase there, and I'd like to hear you elaborate on it a little bit, Gene, and that is the difference between search and chat. Who uses what for what? So search is uh, what we've been doing for 20 years, and uh, the three, the primary use of search is information. That's about 50% of the queries. About 30% are used for commerce and 20% for navigation. So that's search. Chat is this generative experience it's, that has kind of caught, captured all of our attention. Sometimes chat has, uh, has search-like features. I'll give you an example. Today I was using, uh, I was using uh, Bing uh, through their Edge browser and asked how to clean tile. And uh, it gave me a response on how to clean tile. And it also gave, surprisingly, it gave links, about 15 different links to purchase tile cleaning products. That's an example of chat trying to get into uh, the commerce piece. Commerce, right. But Tyler, that's, that's, the, that's the difference between uh, chat and search. And right now, people's behavior really is looking at it as two totally different things. Well, let no one say that Gene Munster doesn't mind getting his hands dirty, all right? That's true. Uh, I do like that. We know what you did today. So, so, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm thinking that if I want to find out the phone number or the menu of my local Chinese restaurant, I'm going to search for that. Right. I don't need chat for that. I just I, I put in T.S. Ma Montclair, New Jersey, and I get it. Uh, uh, I, I get the information. Uh, chat I would use for a totally different purpose. That's right. And uh, the, the kind of the way this plays out longer term is, of course, this belief that ultimately we're going to just go to one uh, source. We're going to go to one uh, piece of information. You, you said something important at the beginning. You said when I search for something, search and Google are, are, are basically interchangeable, that yeah. concept. And so I think at the end of the day, uh, the, the lines are that Microsoft wants to convert chat experience into search type of revenue. And they're trying to do that with some of the advertising they've just recently started. And separately, Google realizes that this is a, a potential risk. And so they're adding more chat-like features that are embedded in their basic search. And I'll get to write the punchline. I talked about three pressure points. There's really one pressure point to this whole story. Can Google ultimately, with their new search uh, paradigm that they're coming out with Gemini, integrating that with Google search, can that ultimately create uh, an experience where you just go to Google and uh, sometimes you're looking for help uh, crafting an email and sometimes you're looking for 
uh, help uh, trying to purchase something. So that's the attention game, but the advantage is clearly in Google's favor, and I think that's what we're seeing from this journal story today. So, so I find it fa so tie it all together for me. Are you set? What is the implication of this hypothesis that you've just laid out brilliantly for the two stocks, especially for Microsoft? I think Microsoft's play, I don't think that they're going to make progress in search. I think that they're going to have uh, do a great job of integrating generative AI into Office, and I think that they'll charge $30 a month more for that, and they're going to have a, 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 good, a great business around that. When it comes to Google, I think we're going to have another uh, shift like we saw in 2010 when we moved from desktop to mobile. I remember at the time I was an analyst and there was a lot of concern about what that was going to do to some of the cost per click and the amount of activity. And ultimately, the price per click went down, but the amount of clicks went up exponentially when you put a computer in your pocket. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see the same thing once Google integrates more uh, generative AI. We're just going to go to Google a lot more and Google is going to find ways to make money. So when I put this together, I mean, Deepwater is invested in in Google, we're not invested in Microsoft, and I think that, that says it all. And you know what else says it all? That you spent the morning cleaning grout. I, I love you, I man. I love it. I do love getting my hands dirty. I, I, great. Gene Munster, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, coming up.